Hi guys, and welcome to the Is It Worth It for the T28E with the F-30 gun, a tier 4 Russian premium medium tank that has been made available today for 24 hours on the advent calendar, December 1st. Now, if it's anything like last year, even though this tank is only available for 24 hours, I have absolutely no doubts that it's probably going to be made available at least once, if not twice more, during the December advent calendar period. It is only available from the gift shop and it costs here on the EU server about 10 euros, but it does come in a slight bundle. It comes with a thousand gold. And the question I'm going to be asking today is, is this tank worth 10 euros with 1000 gold thrown in? So as per usual, let's start with the history of the tank. And as the name suggests, the T-28E is a variant of the T-28. The T-28 was one of the world's first medium tanks. It was designed in 1930, went into mass production in 1931. It remained in production all the way up till 1941, uh, during which the 10 years of production saw over 700 T-28s and T-28 variants built. The uh, T-28E was a variant and it came right at the end of the T-28. 28's uh, life cycle. It was designed and built in 1941 after the Russian Finnish War, uh, where the T-28s were not performing. Uh, as a result, they tried to modernize the T-28 and made the T-28E essentially by giving it the F-30 gun, which is a 85 uh, millimeter, and also increasing the frontal armor of the tank to 80 millimeters. However, as you can see here in game, uh, the T-28E does not have 80 millimeters of frontal armor it only has 50 millimeters so uh, the weight is accurate the top speed is a little bit faster in game and the armor isn't quite as good so I think maybe that's been done for balancing reasons but uh, according to Wargaming I haven't been able to find any information to counteract or count contradict what Wargaming have discovered the T28 was a prototype and no sources were uh, found that uh, Proved or that proved that the tank was mass produced or used in action. So uh, yeah, T28E. It seems to have just been a prototype. And as I say, the major difference between this and the other T28s was the fact it was supposed to get 80 millimeters of frontal armor, which does not exist in game. But that's pretty much it for the history. Now, usually when I'm reviewing a premium tank, I compare it against its competitors. But unfortunately, there are no other tier four premium medium tanks in the game. So uh, about the only thing I I can do is really compare it to the T28 that I'm sure most of you are familiar with and unfortunately I don't own a T28 anymore so we're gonna pop into tank compare and what you're going to see in tank compare is that the T28E is very very different from the T28 even though they look very very similar we've got the top values with the 57 millimeters ZIS 4 on the T28 and uh, starting off we've got similar uh, matchmaking the matchmaking for the T28 E is identical to the in-game T28s. It will see tier 6s, it sees tier 4s, tier 5s, tier 6s, no special matchmaking. You'll see that it gets more hit points. It gets 380 hit points compared to 350 for the T28 in-game. However, the signal range is only at 300 meters compared to 360 on the T28. The T28E has absolutely awful signal range and it was really, really noticeable in my games for this review. So here we are in Runeberg. Now, Runeberg is not the biggest of maps. It's actually quite a small map, but what you can see if you look at the minimap is the fact that I can't see our friendly T28 EF30. I can't see our friendly Hetzer. I can only see our Grant. There are four tanks left on the enemy team. Two RT, an LTP, and a Panzer IV D, and none of them, none of those tanks have been spotted so far. So there are four enemy tanks still in play, and I can't see friendlies, I can't see enemy tanks, and uh, I've got a feeling that maybe they might be in front of me. I was the only tank that actually came up crossroads. I did some damage, got a few tanks killed, but uh, four enemy tanks left on Runeberg. It's not a big map. Um, I'm expecting to run into the LTP or the Panzer IV D. I can't see them. I can only see the Grant. Two tanks completely invisible to me. Right now, I've lost contact with our Artie. 
and all of a sudden our Hetzer kills the LTP. None of those uh, tanks appeared on our minimap. The LTP wasn't on the minimap, the Hetzer wasn't on the minimap. I have no idea where friendly tanks are. I have no idea where uh, enemy tanks are. We've just spotted a Panzer IV D. Still two RT. Nope, there's one RT in play because our Hetzer has now killed the Lorraine. And again, the Lorraine and the Hetzer were not on our minimap. So, uh, yeah, the uh, signal range, it uh, really, really is poor on this tank. And on big open maps, it's much, much worse. Just remember, Runeberg is a not, not a big map. But when you're on a big map, you can completely lose contact with the other side of the battlefield. Have no idea where friendly tanks are, have no idea where enemy tanks are. And as a result, it can cost you a lot of XP, a lot of damage and a lot of credits because you assume tanks might be in front of you and they're not. They're on the other side of the map, but you can't see them. It's a much, much slower tank than the T-28. It gets a 35 km an hour top speed, but good luck reaching that. Usually this tank reaches, at most, even going downhill, about 28 km an hour. So I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate. It is a brand new tank, but I don't ever remember reaching that speed. Uh, it is significantly slower acceleration and top speed wise compared to the 45 km an hour that the in-game T-28 can reach. Um, this was a very very fast maneuverable tank if any of you remember playing it or if any of you still have it uh, the t28e is not it has the same reverse speed it uh, weighs almost twice as much it weighs 33 tons compared to 17 tons for the t28 it has roughly the same load limit and the same crew layout so you are going to need two radio operators and then the first major major difference other than the power is the armor you can see that the whole armor is 50 millimeters side armor is 40 millimeters and the rear armor is 50 millimeters on the hull. That is very, very good compared to the T28, which had absolutely no armor. So uh, the I found the armor on the tank to actually be okay when it's top tier. Now, of course, this armor means absolutely nothing when you get it into tier 5 and tier 6 games. Most tanks are going to be able to penetrate you without any problems, but against some lower tier tanks, against tier 3s, some tier 4s, they did have problems penning me. The turret armor is 50 on front, 40 on the sides, 40 on the rear compared to 25 millimeters all round. So turret armor is again a little bit better than it is on the in-game T28. Once again, lower tier tanks are going to have problems maybe penning this now and again, but most higher tier tanks or similar tier tanks are going to have no problems going through your armor. So still on the subject of armor, we might as well have a closer look at the armor profile in Tanks GG. And what you can see here is even though historically this tank was an upgraded T28 that was given 80 millimeters of frontal armor in game it's only got 50 the thickest frontal armor on this tank is only 50 millimeters thick now there is some small angling going on in places but mainly as you can see it's about 50 millimeters everywhere uh, depending on where you hit it I mean there are sloped areas where the uh, armor is slightly better the upper glacis is about 64 millimeters thanks to its angle but uh, you've got a lot of flat areas of armor very very easy to penetrate pretty much for most of the tanks it's going to be facing you uh, the armor on this tank, it really only works when it's top tier and you can't count on it any other time. If you bounce tier 5s, tier 6s, it's going to be down to look. Uh, so the frontal armor, not amazing. The gun mantlet itself is also 50 millimeters all round. There is a smaller area of uh, spaced armor that makes it slightly thicker in places. You can see you can get maybe get a troll bounce against lower tier tanks, uh, but it, they'd really have to hit it at a bad angle. Um, so really 50 millimeters is the most frontal armor with the exception of the uh, upper glacis. The side armor is both good and bad because I found that I could side scrape. You get 40 millimeters of side armor on this tank as you can see both on the turret and the side. The tracks count as 10 millimeters of spaced armor. So yeah the side armor is okay for the tank and it, it, you can side scrape. Now I was successfully side scraping in some situations so you can side scrape and you can see the, the effective armor is much much better but you can also see that by side scraping if you uh, if someone is shooting you or gets lucky they can still hit your front turret or this smaller turret or whatever you want to call this here uh, and also you've got this large area that is a hitbox it's only 20 millimeters thick on the side of the tank and unfortunately as I say it's a hitbox and uh, when you're side scraping 
pretty much any tank is going to be able to hit pen you here. Uh, this is even exposed when you're facing this tank head on. It's only 20 millimeters thick. So uh, just be aware if you do try to side scrape, probably, or you see one of these things side scraping, the easiest place to shoot it is right here. Only 20 millimeters thick and very, very nice if you happen to be using HE. So the side armor is okay uh, as long as players don't know what they're doing and the rear armor is pretty poor. You've got 50 millimeters on the base of the rear armor, but uh, underneath that you've only got 20 millimeters, 27 millimeters with sloping. The roof of the tank is only about 10 millimeters thick. So uh, yeah, HE can do this uh, tank a heck of a lot of damage. So even though the T28E is much more heavily armored than the in-game T28, that extra armor came at the cost of a lot of speed and a lot of maneuverability. And in addition to that, even though it's got more armor, it's not that effective against higher tier tanks. It's going to be luck if you bounce against tier 5s and 6s. It's really only going to be effective when you're top tier and you've got lower tier tanks shooting at you. Uh, it gets exactly the same engine power, but it does weigh almost twice as much, which means the horsepower to weight ratio is absolutely terrible compared to the T28s. It's again about half what the T28 gets in game. The traverse speed as a result is worse. It does get the max climb or same max climb angle, but Going uphill, this tank is very, very slow. You're going to be dropping down to about six or seven kilometers an hour going up slopes. Uh, the engine power really, really is lacking due to that poor horsepower to weight ratio. And then it also gets uh, much worse terrain resistance, which is very, very surprising for a premium tank. Usually premium tank gets, tanks get a little bit better uh, ground resistance, but not on the T28E. The uh, hard terrain and medium terrain, even the soft terrain, much, much worse than the in-game T28. So it's slower, got a much worse power to weight ratio, and the terrain resistance is much worse on the tank. We do get a positive, however, when it comes to view range, because we get 350 meters of view range compared to 340. Again, not amazing, but it's okay. The uh, turret traverse isn't quite as good as the in-game T28s. And then we come to another major difference between the in-game T28 and the T28E, which is the guns. The uh, T28E gets a, a 85 millimeter gun, whereas the in-game t 28 28 top gun is a 57 millimeter Zis. You can see that the uh, alpha damage is much, much better on the uh, 85 millimeter than it is on the 57 millimeter. The penetration on the standard AP is also better. You get 120 millimeters compared to 112 millimeters on the in-game T28. However, the premium ammo, the penetration is not quite so good. You get 161 millimeters of penetration with the premium ammo compared to 189 millimeters of penetration with the in-game uh, T28. Uh, 57 millimeter. So uh, yeah, the ammo, it's better, but not by much. And the premium ammo is actually a little bit worse. So it's all down to whether or not you value that extra alpha damage. You can see that the shell speed is also much, much slower on the 85 millimeter. Shell velocity is at 792 compared to 990. And then the DPM is also worse. Uh, you've got 1574 DPM compared to 18, well, almost 1900 with the Zis. So uh, yeah, DPM is not amazing on this tank, but it's good enough. Uh, the alpha damage is quite good and just mainly the shell trajectory is a little bit slow. Uh, you can see that basically the lower DPM is a result of slower rate of fire, slower reload. The accuracy is actually quite poor at 0.43, so it's a little bit uh, erratic. Sometimes it can be very good, sometimes it can be very bad, but you can see it is much, much worse than the Zis. And then the aim time is absolutely atrocious at 3.2 seconds. Absolutely terrible aim time on the tank. So essentially it's a more heavily armored slower T28E with a gun that doesn't do as much DPM but has better alpha damage and the gun handling stats are pretty much worse in every single way. Okay, folks, let's check out this gun and this engine in action. We are here on steps. It is a very nice matchup. It's an all tier four game but uh, we're just focused on the engine and the uh, gun. You can see we're getting up to 30 kilometers an hour and we're struggling to get over 30 kilometers an hour. So it is not the quickest of tanks. It's uh, kind of like a fast, heavy tank in regards to its uh, mobility. But uh, we're going to be working the nine zero lines like I always, always recommend doing, but you can see me glancing behind because we don't have a lot of support. Uh, as per usual, 
most of our team seem to be congregating in C5 around two bushes. And I've just got a Sorrel 42 with me, but um, I'm going to poke, push up, see what we can spot. And nothing so far, but we're doing, you can see we're doing about 25 kilometers an hour along here. And this is the usual speed for the tank. Occasionally you can get a little bit quicker when you're going downhill, but uh, usually across moderately soft ground you're going to be doing around 28 kilometers an hour maybe touching 30 so we've pushed up and I was going to poke the ridge um, and then for some reason the one and only ally I have over here the Sorrel 42 decides to commit suicide by trying to drive up the side of the hill so that just leaves me here alone but um, we can poke out you're gonna see here why I've uh, put all my equipment on the um, Going to be talking about equipment in a moment, but uh, I've gone for equipment that basically helps me with the gun handling because I found that the gun handling really isn't very good on the tank. So uh, I'm going to play quite passively for a while because I don't have any backup. There's an AMX 40 moving up, there's a Stuart moving up, but at the moment, until they get up to support me, I don't have very many tanks with me. Still too many tanks camping in C5, C6. But they're slowly starting to move across, so... Most of the fight here is going to be close engagement, but what I want you to do is I want you to focus on, well, the aim time, but also the alpha damage and the rate of fire. You can see 148 there, that was quite a low roll. But the reload, the reload allows me to two-hit kill a T-40. Uh, and this is what this gun can do. It's it's a heavy tank gun on a medium tank, so I trade shots with a, another T28E F30. So uh, he does, what was it, 162 to me, I do 177 to him, so not the best of trades, but um, we've got quite a lot of hit points. We're down to 218. You can see gun depression issues here. I've only got five degrees of gun depression. Gonna take a, it's going to be a problem getting my gun down, but um, right we can just pop up and this is why, as I say, I put equipment on the tank that helps the gun handling because before I put the equipment on the tank, I wasn't able to take shots like that. So just poking out, taking snapshots. Oh, and we bounce. And as I say, you know, this tank, it will bounce similar to your tanks. It's lucky when it happens, but it can happen. Okay, so our team are pushing up. We're pushing the enemy team back. The uh, T-28E on the enemy team is running for it. So again, we're able to poke out, take a snapshot. Um, and as I say, before I was put equipment on the tank, I wasn't able to do that. But this guy is lucky. That's the second shot I've bounced on him. So you can get to see the armor. You get to see the armor on the tank. It doesn't always work, but uh, again, similar tier tanks, it can. You know, you can bounce shots. He bounced more than I did, but uh, we take him out for kill number two. So, um, as I say, this is one of my first games in the tank. We're on a thousand damage already. And we really haven't done that much, but uh, moving up, go for a sneaky shot under the wreck of the tank at the T-28, and unfortunately don't manage to pull it off. But uh, there is my in-game counterpart, T28. He's a one-hit kill. Old man reaction shot. Miss him. But A20, and again, look at this. Not much to shoot at, but the alpha damage. He's able to pen me, but we're able to kill him. So another T28 E F30. So just poking, get a shot in. He misses, and again, poke using the wreck for cover. Get a shot in. He fires, he misses. So I think I've got his reload beaten. And apparently I don't, so I reckon he must be using consumables as well. So we end up killing each other, but I think that's poetic justice. Two 20 T28 E F 30s killing each other. Uh, but I really did think I had his rate of fire beaten because um, I fired before he did and I thought I would have reloaded, but uh, wasn't to be. But uh, yeah, this was one of my first ace tankers in the tank. So what you got to see there was a medium tank that lacks the acceleration and lacks the top speed of a lot of other medium tanks in mid-tier. Um, it's not a fast tank. It's not slow. It's not painfully slow. It's not like a Matilda, but it's not the quickest of tanks. But it's got a great gun that reminds me a lot of a heavy tank gun on 
on a medium tag. As long as you can deal with the aim time, as long as you can deal with the five degrees of gun depression, which can cause problems, uh, and accuracy issues at long distance, I think the gun actually is okay. I think it's a, that's one of the strongest features. Even though the, the gun does have issues, the fact it's got that amazing penetration, that amazing alpha damage, means that you can hurt tanks that are tier 5, you can hurt tanks that are tier 6. In all the games for this review, I didn't have to fire a single round of premium ammo. But uh, we finished up top on XP with 939, uh, almost 1500 damage done very, very quickly. A um, little bit unhappy I died at the end, but you know, no, no one is perfect. Uh, four kills. You can see what this tank is capable of when it's top tier. It's very, very good when it's top tier. Uh, we fired 15, we hit 13, and penned 11. So a close range um, where the aim time and the accuracy don't matter as much. The gun can be very, very good. You can take out a lot of tanks with two shots. I killed two shot, killed a T40. Um, it's just a very, very high alpha gun for a tier four. Uh, it's not a bad money maker either. So with, for 1500 damage, we earned 43,000 credits. This is a tier four, guys. 43,000 credits with a premium account. You can see that the, even though I was destroyed, the repair costs were cheap. The ammo costs, we fired 15. The ammo costs only came to 1,600 credits. It's a decent money maker. It's a decent crew trainer. Um, it's not the quickest tank, but it's good enough. Uh, the gun is not the greatest gun, but the penetration and the alpha make up for the poor uh, accuracy and the poor aim time. So let's talk about crew, and the T-28E has an absolutely huge crew. It's got six crew members. It's got a commander, a gunner, a driver, two radio operators, and a loader. Um, so as a crew trainer, it's actually okay. It's a little bit strange because most of the higher tier Russian medium tanks, for example, the T-44, have four crew members, and that goes up for pretty much all the higher tier Russian mediums. They've only got four crew members, so you're going to be able to train up the full medium tank crew in the T-28E from pretty much all the higher tier Russian medium tanks. Uh, however, the mid-tier Russian medium tanks are where you're going to find your two extra radio operators, because mid-tier Russian mediums happen to have have radio operators. Actually, that's a bad example. T-43 doesn't. Uh, however, if we take a look at the T-3485, that's got a radio operator. If we take a look at the A-44, that's got a radio operator. So uh, what you're going to have is if you're going up Russian medium lines and you've gone up quite a far, then you're going to have spare radio operators lying around in your barracks. As you can see, a uh, spare radio operator from the A44 and a spare radio operator from the T3485 in here. So you're going to be able to train up your higher tier Russian medium crews, but you're going to need spare radio operators. So it's a decent crew trainer, I suppose. Um, it just takes a little bit longer for the crew to level up in this tank because it's so big. As you can see, um, this guy is the guy who's getting extra XP every game and he's from a tank I don't even own anymore, the T-3485. So there's a good chance when you do put radio operators in this tank, they're not going to be as well trained as some of the other t other crew members. And as a result, it's going to take a little bit longer to level them up. But uh, yeah, as a crew trainer, I suppose technically you can train up every Russian medium tank crew in the game in this particular tank. So let's talk about equipment. Now, there are quite a few equipment choices for the T-28E. Most of the equipment choices I went for are based around trying to improve the gun handling because I found the gun handling very, very poor on the tank. The aim time is terrible. The uh, accuracy is not very good. So uh, I've pretty much chosen all the equipment that helps me with that. But uh, starting off with the toolbox, it's only going to be viable if you've got a poor crew in the tank. If you've got a crew that are working on the repair skills, then you might want to skip a toolbox. I think there are better pieces of equipment. Enhanced gun laying drive to improve your aiming speed. Now, unfortunately, this tank doesn't get vertical stabilizers, otherwise I'd go for them. But the aim time really is bad on this tank. And uh, as a result, I've had to go for a gun laying drive. I would much, much prefer another piece of equipment, but really the aim time was just causing me too many problems. Cyclone filter to improve the engine durability, complete waste of time. You've got coated optics or binox. And usually I would put one or the other on a tank, but as I say, the gun handling is what 
makes this tank work and unfortunately you've got to try and improve that so I've had to skip the uh, optics and skip the binox on this tank at least in my opinion if you are going to be putting uh, view range equipment on the tank then I would probably suggest binox over coated optics because uh, when this tank is top tier yeah coated optics are absolutely fine you're going to be driving around the place you're going to be shooting on the move however when it's not top tier you're going to be playing a much more support role maybe even doing a little bit of sniping and it's possible that the binox are going to be a little bit more flexible but as I say I haven't gone for either because the gun handling just wasn't working for me. Uh, medium caliber gun rammer to improve the loading time increase your DPM by 10% absolute must on the tank. Medium spall liner complete waste of time. Wet ammo rack complete waste of time. I don't think I was ammo racked once during any of the games for this review. Uh, improve vents is something I did go for because it improves the tank about two and a half percent overall. That improves my aim time. It improves my accuracy improves pretty much everything about the tank so uh, I've had to go for improved vents over optics. Uh, a camo net is only viable if you're playing on a budget and maybe using toolbox, binox and camo net. It is a medium tank, doesn't maintain its camo rating on the move and enhanced suspension is a complete and utter waste of time. So uh, really the three equipment choices I went for are the gun lane drive, the gun rammer and the fence and that's simply to try and improve the gun handling because when the gun works on this tank it can be actually very very good Okay folks, time for the overview game, a game where I try and show you as many strengths and weaknesses of whatever tank I'm reviewing in one replay. We are here in Corellia, I'm a tier 4 in a tier 5 game, uh, and we are just going to be working the 9-0 lines, and you can see that going downhill we've managed to get our speed up to 36 kilometers an hour. So it's not a quick tank, but uh, once it builds up a head of steam it's actually okay. Um, so we maintaining our speed we're going to be moving along here now usually usually I'd be expecting to do about 28 kilometers maybe to 30 kilometers but we're actually doing okay along here because we hit a slight rise there we go we've dropped down to about 30 just slightly over 30 and now you're gonna see the tank going uphill now going uphill in a lot of situations I think it depends a lot on the terrain resistance but on a lot of times I've gone uphill the tank struggled to get above 10 kilometers an hour. Here, it's actually doing okay. Um, you can see the speed dropping off quite a bit. We've dropped from 30 kilometers down to 19. We're going to drop even further as we get onto steeper slope. Um, so yeah, the horsepower to weight ratio is it's not terrible but it's definitely not good. We've dropped down to 10 kilometers an hour trying to get up this rise. But um, I'm trying to play like a medium tank even though I don't really have the speed to do it. But uh, we've managed to win the hill. And uh, it doesn't look as if the enemy team sent too many tanks down the 9-0 line. So I know there's a T-34 just below me. And I've got gun depression issues. So I've got to go down, use the downward slope in order to try and get shots on this target. So gun depression is not great, but um, we get a shot into the T-34 higher tier tank. There's a T-56 GMC, and look at the alpha damage. That was a low roll, and we still did 154. So you can see the rate of fire is good. That's another 161. So we're already up to almost 500 damage. We've only fired three shots. Um, the damage can build up very, very quickly in this tank. And on top of that, you've got a heck of a lot of ammunition. I forgot to mention that as well. I'm doing this trying to rush it out, but you can see how long the aim time is. You've got th over three seconds aim time. It takes forever to aim, but when you aim in fully, the gun can be quite accurate, 0.41. So uh, put another shot into the Covenanter. We're up to almost a thousand damage so far, um, and it feels as if the game is only just starting. But uh, yeah, 160 alpha damage, and you get a hundred rounds of ammunition in this tank. You can do a heck of a lot of damage with a hundred rounds. Um, and as I said, I have never had to fire any premium in this uh, tank whatsoever, no matter what matchup I got it into. But uh, we've come down slope, we're flanking. Um, and you can see once you aim in fully, the accuracy is quite good. Doesn't help my old man reaction shots there. Tank was dead long before I fired at him, but... Um, you can also see the shell velocity is not the quickest on the tank, but it's okay when you're shooting at uh, 
stationary targets. Uh, wasn't sure whether or not I had a outline of the martyr. I decided to go for a shot anyway. Um, so if you look at the mini map, we've got uh, three tanks. We've got an M3 Lee and two T56 GMCs, basically covering our spawn at the moment. Um, that's going to change very, very quickly because the TDs suddenly decide to run away from spawn, even though we've got enemy tanks moving down the north. But uh, flank the Martyr 38T, and as you can see, not the quickest tank. But we kill him. Uh, in turn, we get flanked by a Covenanter. He's damaged my turret ring, so I couldn't get my gun across in time to kill him. If my turret ring had been working, I probably would have been able to get that kill. So, um, yeah, the last time I looked at the minimap, we had had two T-56 GMCs guarding our spawn. We also had an M3 Lee. The M3 Lee has just died, but not a single enemy tank has appeared on the minimap. And that's because our signal range is absolutely terrible. So, um, as I say, I looked at the minimap, couldn't see enemy tanks, thought we had two TDs guarding our spawn, and they've decided to advance. So what's happening now is I don't have signal range, don't know what's happening with the enemy tanks that have moved to our spawn, but for some reason, we're not capping. So I'm trying to get shots on this ram, and there we go. The gun, when you take snapshots, it's terrible. Snapshots in this tank are not good. I don't have the gun depression to kill this ram, so what I've got to do is I've got to reverse back up a slope to get extra gun depression. We take out the ram, and all of a sudden, this is when I realized, hey, hey, where, where did the where did the the T56 GMCs go? Oh, they just rolled down through the center of the map. So two enemy tanks capping. Um, we decided not to cap, and um, I'm trying to go back to defend. Now, I'm doing 35 kilometers a an hour along here, which is actually okay. It's a lot quicker than I remember the tank being. But um, this is the other issue. If I was in a T-28, could I have gotten back to stop the cap? Could I have gotten back quicker? And I probably could have um, if I was in a T-28 the regular in-game tank, I probably could have done something about this, or I might have been able to spot an enemy tank, but as is enemy team cap out, the tank is just not quick enough to get back. So it's not a slow tank, but it's definitely not a quick one. Um, it gets around the battlefield. I think the biggest issues with this tank are definitely its signal range on big open maps like this, where you lose contact with friendlies, you lose contact with uh, friendly spotting enemy tanks. Uh, and the gun, the uh, gun handling, the uh, if you try and take snapshots, long aim time, and at distance the accuracy, although it held up in this game, is not fantastic. But the tank held up even when it wasn't top tier. Um, it's good enough, and uh, even though the tank doesn't get special matchmaking, which would normally be a negative, I don't think this tank needs special matchmaking because it's got a gun that is competitive. It's not the best gun, but you can make it work. So uh, we picked up high caliber for that game. Um, not the best result, definitely a defeat was not good, but you got to see how quickly this tank can deal out damage. High alpha, decent rate of fire, the DPM may not be as good as it is on the in-game T28, but it's still very, very good. Uh, three kills, 880 XP. I think maybe future aces might be harder to get. A lot of new players are playing this tank to get, uh, today. But uh, the other big benefit of this tank is it's a tier 4 premium. Um, but we fired 15, hit 11, only pen 10. We still managed to do 1,362 damage, and we earned 40,000 credits with a premium account. This is a tier four, and we're earning 40,000 credits. You can see that the repair costs, once again, are very cheap. The ammo costs, once again, are very, very cheap. Um, yeah, I think the tank works. Um, it's not a T-28. If you are expecting this tank to be like a T-28 and be fast and mobile, you're probably going to be disappointed but I think the gun or the tank itself works and a lot of that's down to the gun. Okay folks time to sum up. Is the T28E worth whatever Wargaming are charging you for that package in whatever particular region you happen to be? And it is a package, so we're starting with the negatives, because this is a tank that is once again bundled. It's bundled with unneeded golds in this particular case, at least there's no premium time this time around, but um, this is a tier 4 premium. I mean, there's nothing to get excited about, it's a tier 4 premium, and tier 4 premiums would normally cost around 5 euros, 5 bucks bucks, five dollars, whatever. Um, this is double that price because it's got 1,000 gold included in the package. And 
YouTubers have already talked about this. The community have already talked about this. It's been brought up in the forums again and again and again. People are getting sick of bundles, but yet Wargaming are constantly, constantly bringing out bundles. Um, and it's really, really starting to get annoying. It really is. Uh, and if I wasn't reviewing tanks, I probably wouldn't have bought this because it's in a bundle. And I hate flaming bundles. Um, Wargaming... Uh, just do whatever the hell they want. And I mean, yeah, you can argue they're a business and that they're there to make money, but I honestly think they would sell more of this tank if they were selling just the tank than bundles, because people would be more likely to spend a fiver on this tank than they would 10 euros. Um, but that's that's just me. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong on that, but uh, personally, I'm just getting sick of bundles, and if you're like me and you're against bundles, this is a bundle, and it's a big negative, and it may turn you away from the tank. Um, it doesn't stop there, so we might as well uh, continue with the negatives. They, um, the hit points are a actually a positive. The hit points, it gets more hit points than the in-game T28. Uh, so the hit points are good, but really they're only effective when you're in a tier 4 game as top tier. The extra hit points means that maybe you might take one or two extra hits when you're in a tier 5 game, tier 6 game. A lot of tanks are going to be able to one-hit kill you, um, and the hit points don't really mean as much when you're not top tier. Um, it's a very heavy tank, unfortunately, 33.5 tons for me, and um, because it gets the same engine as the in-game T28, it means the horsepower to weight ratio is, is well, it, technically it's okay at 15, but it's very, very poor compared to the in-game T28. Um, it doesn't have a very good top speed of 35 kilometers an hour, and it struggles to reach 35 kilometers an hour. Um, so it's got a poor horsepower to weight ratio, and its top speed is not great. In addition, the traverse speed on the hull is not fantastic either. Very, very slow for a medium tank. The turret traverse speed looks okay on paper, but again, it's slower than the uh, T28 in game. So the handling of this tank, the maneuverability, the mobility of this tank are closer to a fast, heavy tank tank than they are actually a medium tank. So that's going to be a negative. If you like medium tanks, if you like fast uh, gameplay, if you like uh, your your medium tanks to be fast and mobile and maneuverable, you're not going to get that with the T28E, even though you might like the T28. T28E is a heavy tank to all intents and purposes. Um, it's basically got slightly better than heavy tank mobility, but in addition to that, it gets a heavy tank gun. Um, it gets a good gun with decent penetration and very, very good alpha damage for a tier 4. The gun's uh, penetration and alpha damage are so good, it means it's competitive even in a tier 6 game, assuming you can get shots and hit weak spots. Um, and that's before we talk about the negatives. So the penetration and the alpha are great on the gun. However, you've got to deal with five degrees of gun depression. You've got to deal with incredibly long aim time. And you've got to deal with poor accuracy at range. But... Overall, I think the gun is actually quite good on it. So, um, slow, heavy tank mobility, heavy tank gun for a tier 4 in my opinion, and you've got armor. So unlike a lot of medium tanks at tier 4, including the T28, the uh, regular T28 in game, you've got almost double the armor over the regular T28. So um, the armor can be quite effective when it is top tier. It means absolutely nothing in tier 5 or tier 6 game, but uh, yeah, the armor can be quite quite good. So you've got heavy tank mobility, heavy tank gun, heavyish armor for a medium tank. So if you like playing heavies, I think you're probably going to enjoy this more than if you like playing mediums. Um, the view range is actually quite good at 350 meters. It could do with boosting. I wish I could boost it maybe in time when I get a much better crew in the tank. Um, but the view range is okay. And the other big negative for me was the signal range. Signal range is absolutely awful absolutely terrible signal range. Um, it basically meant that I lost contact with half my team on big maps. If my team go down one flank, I was on the other flank, I would lose complete contact with the uh, the uh, tanks on the other flank. Um, wouldn't know who was winning unless I was watching the kill feed. Wouldn't know where enemy tanks were being spotted. I wouldn't know um, what friendly tanks were dying without keeping an eye on the kill feed. The signal range is going to cost you uh, credits. It's going to cost you XP when you're driving this tank. It's the first premium tank I've ever reviewed where the signal range of notice such 
such a big, big problem with the signal range, but um, it's there. And I think I showed you a couple of examples earlier in the video. Um, it is a premium tank, so that means it's a good credit earner. It does make surprisingly good credits. The repair costs and the ammo costs are very, very cheap. And because the gun is effective, even against higher tier tanks, this tank will make you credits. A very good credit maker for a tier four. And it's a decent crew trainer. It'll train up every single uh, Russian medium crew in the game as long as you have a couple of extra radio operators. So um, yeah, the tank has problems and it has uh, some things I like about it, but as an overall package, um, I'm not disappointed with the tank. I think maybe if it wasn't in a bundle, it would be better value for money, but it's not a medium tank. Regardless of what it says, it may train up medium crews, but I think, as I say, if you're a medium player, if you like playing medium tanks, you might be a little bit disappointed with it. I think it's very, very competitive when it's top tier. I think it's still competitive in a tier 5 game, and in a tier 6 game, you're going to have to play it a little bit more passively, a little bit more in a support role, but it's still possible to to do a job in this tank so um it's not a bad tank it really isn't a bad tank um i'm not the biggest fan i'm i find the gun handling rather annoying and I find the mobility is problematic when I'm trying to get into a position or trying to retreat or trying to get away because the tank just isn't fast enough. Um, it's a little bit team dependent. Uh, if you're facing off against multiple enemy tanks you don't have very much survivability because it is only a tier 4. And tier 5s and tier 6s are going to tear it apart. Uh, Cromwell platoons absolutely destroyed me, uh, at least in two, possibly three occasions during uh, my play session. So, um, yeah, it's not competitive against... Uh other medium tanks. It's not competitive against tier 5 medium tanks. It's not competitive against tier 6 medium tanks. Uh, higher tier tanks are going to eat this thing for breakfast. But, you know, as a tier 4, I think it's not bad. I think it would probably be one of the better tier 4s in the game. But overall, it comes down to this. Do you really, really want a Russian medium tank crew trainer? Because if you really, really, really want a Russian medium tank crew trainer, there are lots of premium Russian medium tanks to choose from. Uh, you've got the T-34-85M. Now, I'll be perfectly honest, I'd rather play this tank than the T-34-85M. Uh, and you've also got the T-54 Mod 1, which uh, might be a little bit pricey compared to this, as it's a Tier 8 premium. But right in the middle, you've got the T-3485 Rudy. And I have absolutely no doubts that the Rudy is going to be made available sometime during this advent calendar. And um, the Rudy, I've already reviewed it. It is one of my favorite premium tanks in game. And if you really, really want a Russian medium tank uh, crew trainer, premium medium tank crew trainer, then go for the Rudy over this. If you're a tank collector, you probably already bought this, or you're going to buy it. But uh, if you're just looking for a medium crew trainer for Russian crews, buy the Rudy. It is much, much better. Um, I have no idea what sort of bundle, even if it is going to be in a bundle, Wargaming are going to offer. But the Rudy is going to be worth it. Um, it's a very, very good premium tank. And it's got a nice dog as a mascot. So it's probably worth it if you can overlook the fact it's in a bundle. But personally, I'm going to stick to my Rudy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.